Hi everyone. I want to help you with trinomial factoring. Factoring is, is such an important skill in mathematics, but it's not one that comes easily. It's not obvious to a lot of people. However, it's not even all that hard of a concept. It's, it's kind of like, it's, honestly, it's kind of like learning, let's say, learning to drive a, a standard, okay? Uh, it takes a while, it takes a lot of practice, but once you get it, you get it. You just get comfortable with it, it becomes natural to you. Trinomial factoring is a lot like that, okay? Takes a little bit of getting used to. You gotta kinda get over that hump, and then once you're there, you're, you're good. Now, to start off with, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a couple of binomials, we're gonna multiply them together, because I'll show you here what we mean. This is what a, a trinomial would look like in factored form. This is the, our goal here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this, we're gonna expand this out, get an answer, and then I'm going to show you how we get back to this, okay? So now, first of all, I'm going to expand this out. And remember how that works here. We take both terms from this first binomial, and they get distributed to both terms in this second bi binomial here. It's just a distribution. So 3x will get multiplied by 2x plus 5. And then the negative 2 will also get multiplied by 2x plus 5. 3x gets distributed to those terms, and we get 6x squared plus 15x when I distribute the 3x to those two. Negative 2 then gets distributed to these two terms. We get negative 4x and then minus 10. Now, what causes the problems when we start factoring is that I now am going to put these two terms together. I'm going to combine them. So 6x squared well, positive 15 and negative 4 is going to get me 11x with a negative 10 at the back there. And if the fact that those two get combined together, that's what causes some of the difficulty here because it's kind of difficult to undo that, that little bit of addition there, the adding of the negatives there, okay? So now we're going to take a look at how to go backwards from here and take us right back to the beginning here. And there are several methods that can be used to do this. In this video, I want to talk about the method of decomposition. I'm just going to outline how this works for you. I'm not going to explain kind of why it works. I'm just going to outline the procedure so that you've got it. So the very first thing that we want to do with decomposition is we're going to take this first, this leading coefficient, and we're going to multiply it by the constant. Because what I'm looking for, everybody, I'm looking for two numbers, two very special numbers. Okay, the first property of these numbers is that their product is going to be the same as the product of the leading coefficient and the constant. So the product I'm looking for is going to be, uh, sorry, the two numbers I'm looking for will have a product of negative 60, and they will also have a sum corresponding to the coefficient of the linear term. Okay, that middle term there. So I'm looking for two very special numbers whose product is going to be negative 60, whose sum will be 11. Now, because this product here is negative, I know that one of these two numbers here is going to be negative. Because the sum is positive, I know that the larger of the two is going to be the, the uh, positive one. So I think about 60. Now, this is the hard part. Coming up with these numbers can be quite difficult. Okay? And I don't, I don't deny that. I understand that that can be the case here. Um, You've got to kind of play around with it. You've got to guess at it a little bit here. Now, if you have a hard time guessing those numbers here, there is something that you can do. Okay, you can pull out your calculator, and I'll show you really quickly how you can help, let your calculator help you out with this. If you go to y, whoops, sorry, if you press y equals, ah, sorry, my calculator's in the middle of something. I'm looking for two numbers whose product is negative 60 here. So if I take negative 60 and tell the calculator to divide by, and the variable button right here is the x, so I pressed y equals, sorry, I pressed y equals to get to this screen, and then I did negative 60 divided by x. If I now press second graph to get into my table of values, what the calculator does, and I've already moved down a little bit, I'll just kind of move up here. Sorry, whoops, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. What I'm looking for here is I want the calculator to, to show me it's, it's a bunch of factors here. So I'm going to just go down so I've got the zero up the top here. So what the calculator has told, bro, done for me is broken down uh, and divided negative 60 by all of these numbers. I'm looking for the pair of numbers whose sum is going to be positive 11. So is it 1 and negative 60? No. 
2 and negative 30, no, 3 and negative 20, no, and so on, until I get down here to 4 and negative 15. And that is close. That would get me a sum of negative 11, okay? If I keep going down until I get down to 15, here I get 15 and negative 4, that's the sum that I'm looking for. So my numbers here are going to be 15 and negative 4. Okay. That's the hard part of factoring, especially by decomposition, is coming up with these numbers here. Now, this is the part that I'm interested in. Because notice that 15 and negative 4 get me 11. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my expression here now. And I'm going to rewrite the 11 as 15x and negative 4x minus 10. So all I've done is replaced the 11 with these two numbers that I've already determined will, will give me a sum of 11. Now I've got four terms. And if you think back to how we used to, to factor this, this requires, oops, whoa, this requires grouping. I don't know why I did that. This requires grouping. So I'm going to group together the first two terms, put a big plus sign in between, and group together the last two terms. So that negative 4, that negative gets pulled over with the negative 4 there. I'm always going to put a plus sign in between. Always. Now, what are the, what's common to this, just these two factors? Well, the answer is it's going to be a 3 and an x. That's what I see common to the 6 and the 15, x squared and x. And when I divide that 3x out of those two terms, when I divide it out of 6x squared, I will get 2x. When I divide it out of 15x, I will get a positive 5. Here, what's common to these two terms? Well, clearly the negative and the, a 2. And when I divide negative 4x by negative 2, I will get positive 2x. Negative 10 divided by, by negative 2 will be positive 5. And now, notice that that binomial 2x plus 5 is common, okay? Is common to these two terms, which means 2x plus 5, okay, was multiplied by 3x was the first term, it got distributed to those two terms. The negative 2 got distributed to those two terms. And so there we go. Those are my two factors. And if you go back to where we started, okay, those are the factors that we were looking for. So we've been able to go right back to the original question. Okay, everybody, that's decomposition.